Hi. Today, I thought we'd have a look at this crucial one terabyte solid state drive. I purchased this off eBay for a spares or repair and it was advertised as not being detected. I think I paid £9.99 £9, I think it was plus £3 posted so about £13 in total. I'll just bring the listing up so you can have a look there. And I think the first thing that we'll do is we'll plug it in. I've got one of these USB to SATA adapters, we'll plug it into the laptop and we'll see what it does to see if it actually is being detected or if it's another problem. Right, I'll go and grab the laptop. Right, I've got the laptop now. I'll just take this out with a little packet and plug it in. And I'm recording the laptop screen so we can see exactly what happens when we plug it in. So where's the input there? Oh. I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear like a buzzing coming from it. Right, I'll unplug that. So I'm wondering if there's some kind of short on this. Right, I'll just get the laptop out of the way for now. And I think we'll just start taking this apart. Now, how does it come apart? Looks like there's two screws on this side and two screws on that side. Now I'm not sure whether I'll be able to fix this or not but at least we might be to find out what the cause of failure was because it could be one of the main ICs that had blown in it or something like that which in that case we'll not be able to repair it but you never know the electron gods might be shining favourably on me and it might be something like a blown capacitor or something Right, well there's a bit less in there than what I thought was going to be. So I think we might bring the microscope in and I'll have a closer look over this board. I'll just remove it from the actual rest of the housing first. Let's put these screws to one side. Right, okay. Right, I'll go and get the microscope and we'll have a look over this board. Right, so I've got the microscope hooked up. Let's have a look over this board then. Well, that looks a bit like a programming or debug header or something just here. Uh, what we've got here then? Looks like some kind of chip. That could be, I don't know, cache RAM or something. Let's see if I can get that focused in a little bit better. That could be something like RAM for caching the data possibly before it gets written to flash. Just so it speeds things up maybe. That looks like one of the flash chips. That chip here is probably the main controller with it having the thermal pad on. And that's the SATA connector just here. It looks like we've got a 50 megahertz crystal. There's a capacitor there. I think it's a capacitor anyway, but it looks maybe. I don't know if that's a little bit flux around it. So we'll check that one a bit later, once we get the test meter out. We've got another flash chip up here. A few more capacitors. These look like power supply around about here. There's two separate power supplies. Or maybe each chip does two, so there's four supplies here, I'm not sure. Those look like inductors either side of it. And then we've got a array of capacitors around each one. So there's an inductor there by the look of it, and an inductor there. It's marked there L501. And that one's L502. That one's L503. What else have we got? There's another little IC here, I'm not sure what that one is. Looks like a place there for a couple of LEDs, whether they're for debugging or drive activity, possibly. Let's just have a look, see if there's anything else. That looks about it on this side of the board. Right, we'll flip the board over and we'll have a look on this side then. So there's the other side of that debug connector or programming header, which seems to head off down to where the main IC is. 
that capacitor there looks a little bit discoloured possibly as well again there's another chip here so whether or not that's some kind of memory or whether it's some kind of NAND controller I'm not 100 percent these two here look like the NAND chips There's a capacitor here again. That one looks slightly discoloured. Right. I think we'll get the test meter out. And we'll just start checking some of these capacitors. So let's put the meter on the diode check. And we'll start with this one then. That one's not shorted. Let's try the little one next to it. So those ones seem all right. Let's try this one. Getting a reading on that, but it's not shorted. Let's just try this one because this one looks a little bit discoloured as well. Yeah, that one's not shorted either, so. And there's not really much else on this side of the board. Right, let's go back to the other side then. And then where does the power come in? So it looks like the power comes in on this connector here. So we'll try that capacitor there. Yeah, right. C44. And let's try it that way. Right, so we have got a short on this board somewhere then, because that capacitor is measuring short. Let's try this one. That one's measuring OK. So I presume that one would be because it's wired in parallel. Yeah. Let's try that one. No, ferrite bead, so that would measure the short. And anyway, I should, I would think. Yeah. Capacitor here. Let's try that one. That one's okay. That one's okay. I say that one definitely looks a bit discoloured, and it looks like the solder either side of it. And that one's measuring short. I mean, it could just be that capacitor. Let's just try some of these other ones. Let's try up here. That's measuring short. That one seems okay. That one seems okay. I just wonder if that one was measuring short or whether my other probe was catching that side. Yeah, it might be my probe catching the other side of that. So, it looks to me like it could be that capacitor. And if it is, that'll be good, because then we've got some chance of fixing this one. Because if it was something like the main chip heating up, then, you know, we would not be able to fix it. So I think what we'll do, I'll get the laptop back out. I'll get the thermal camera out. We'll connect it up, and we'll see if this capacitor starts getting hot, or if something else on the board starts getting hot. Right, I shall go and do that then. So I've got the thermal camera set up here now. So we'll plug this in. And we'll see if we can see what's getting hot. 
see if I can find something just to point with there. So it looks like that inductor there is getting hot. And that component there, which is that capacitor. So I've had a couple of people asking about the thermal camera. What uh, you know? What thermal camera is it? This is the Infrared P2 Pro, and if you're interested in obtaining one, I've put some links in the video description of some various tools that I use. So if you're interested, have a look. Right, I think the next thing is we need to get this under the microscope. Then remove that capacitor and see if we can find a replacement, and we'll see if that cures the problem. Right, so we've got it under the microscope here. I'm just going to add a little bit of flux. Just that capacitor there. I might see if I can just get this one off of the iron. So I don't want to disturb any of the other components around here. It might be kind of welded to the board, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be wanting to budge. Sometimes they sort of weld themselves to the boards if there's a short or something. I'll just try a little bit of a different angle here. Oh, that's moving. There we go. Right, so that's it off. I'll just give this area a little bit of a clean up with some IPA. Right, I'll see if I can find another capacitor to put on there then. Right, I found a capacitor, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little bit of flux on these pads. I've just given them a little bit of a clean up. I'm going to put a little bit of leaded solder on them. Right, now I'm going to use the rework station. Right, I think that'll do. Right, let's get the meter back out. See if we've got a short across there now, still. Well, oh, that's because I'm just catching that uh, resistor next to it there. Right, we don't appear to have a short there now. Let's just try this capacitor. Right, well, the short appears to have gone. So let's connect it back up to the laptop now and we'll see what's happening. Right, so let's try and see what it does. Just plug it back into the adapter here and we'll plug this into the laptop. Ooh. Right, so it has came up as disk one now. But it says it's 931.51 gigabyte and it says unallocated. Now, I don't know what this disk was used for previously. It may still be faulty, but it could be that it's been formatted as a Linux partition or something that Windows doesn't recognize. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of investigation on this just to see if I can figure out if it has got any data on. And if not, then we'll format it and see if that works. So I've just had a little bit of an idea, then let's get the thermal camera back out and just see if anything's getting hot still now. So that inductor's not getting hot anymore. And um, we don't have any hot spots around here. Now the only thing that seems to be getting a little bit hot is that chip. A little chip just in the middle there, but I'd say that's normal. And the main controller seems to be getting a little bit hot. Right, okay, I just thought we'd just see what was going on with the thermal camera. 
So I'm currently running a program called Test Disk just to see if there's anything or any data on this drive and it's about 67% done so let's see if it finds anything when it gets to 100 but it hasn't came up with any errors or anything so hopefully fingers crossed we've uh, repaired this one right so this tool hasn't found anything on this hard drive so has this hard drive just been a brand new hard drive that's never been used before or as soon as the plug it in it's failed or is there something else going on I'm going to try a different program just to see if we can read any of the sectors on it I'm going to try a program called HXD which is a hex editor but it can read raw sectors on the disk so that's the next thing I'm going to try so I've got this program called HXD which is a hex editor so what I'm going to do is open up the disk which is this one here the um, crucial 932 or one terabyte we'll hit open and the first sector looks all blank just all zeros so we'll just scroll down yeah that's all zeros let's just try going to the next sector right so we're on about sector 30 now and that's all blank as well so I just wonder if this is a brand new hard drive. Right, well there's no data on it. So let's close this and we'll try formatting it. So let's see if we can create a new partition then. So we'll initialize the disk. And that seemed to work okay. New simple volume. And we'll format it NTFS. Well, it's wearing away at the moment. And that looks like it. It looks like it's just popped up as a normal drive. So I wonder if this drive has been bought brand new they've sent it to the customer they've plugged it in and it just hasn't worked so they've returned it because it just came straight up there i wonder if there's a, a way of finding out how much runtime this drives had but it appears to be working now so i think i'll put the top back on for now and i'll do a few more tests on it all right i'll get the top back on then it's just these four screws to go i think and that's it really Perhaps I've lost one of the screws. Ah, found it. Right, so I think we can take this faulty label off now. And I'll just give it a bit more test and then I think we'll wrap up. So I found this program called Crucial Storage Executive. And if we're just going to the drive here, if we're going to drive details. It'll tell us a little bit about the drive and whether it's you know in good health or not. It tells you the drive temperature and capacity and everything. But also if we go into Smart and then select the drive, it'll tell us how many hours the drive has been running for and how many power cycles it's had. So literally this is a brand new hard drive because if we look at the power on hours count here, it's at zero. And how many errors it's had? Zero. It's only had 13 power cycles. So literally, it's a brand new drive. It's never been used before. So this must have literally been plugged in. That capacitor has blown. And then they've listed it as spares of repairs on eBay. So I think we'll wrap up the video there then. So I'm well happy with that. I've literally got a brand new one terabyte hard drive for 13 pound. So yeah, very happy with that one. Right then, if you enjoyed this video, please give it the thumbs up. If you wanna see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comment section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.